Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us try to recollect uh, <coughs> what we did yesterday through this model. This is uh, uh, 1 over 200 scaled model of this is 3 name is dk <coughs> it is operated by Lufthansa so this is just one of the aircraft models and let us try to understand the nomenclature that we have discussed yesterday so this part of the aircraft which is used to carry the passengers and the freight is called fuselage wings are these two surfaces and there is a twin engine propeller aircraft so you see two engines symmetrically located with respect to a plane that will uh, discuss about this surface is called vertical tail and this surface is the horizontal tail. So we defined the axis system if you remember yesterday we defined an axis system to the aircraft x y and z fixed at the with the origin fixed at the center of gravity or the center of mass of the aircraft. So this x axis can be taken as you know, the lining line joining the uh, center of the fuselage cross sections. So if you take the fuselage cross section there will be a center for that and when you join uh, the center of the fuselage along its length uh, you, you can define this x axis at that line or, or uh, if the CG of the aircraft is not lying along that line then we have to uh, define this x axis differently. So this x axis has, has to pass through the center of gravity or the center of mass of the aircraft. The aircraft uh, is actually symmetric uh, about this axis uh, the, about this plane which is passing through the uh, axis x of the aircraft. So uh, if you look at uh, this aircraft model carefully this is the line or this is the plane which is dividing the aircraft into two equal parts and that plane is uh, the plane of symmetry also called longitudinal plane of the aircraft in that plane this z axis is defined as perpendicular to the x axis y axis completes the orthogonal coordinate system so y axis is perpendicular to x and z axis okay so uh, 
the motion of aircraft you know, along the x axis in the forward direction you know, was associated with the variable u that was the <coughs> velocity of aircraft along its own x axis the side velocity is along the y axis which is uh, along the span of the wing and uh, if you look at uh, the system the right handed system uh, tells us that if this is the x axis the y axis is you know, away from me you know, along this part of the wing and the z axis is downward. So <coughs> side velocity v is along the y axis of the aircraft so it is like this and the downward velocity w is along the z axis which is perpendicular to the, to the x and the y plane so it is like this. So this is uh, uh, this gives you three translational degree of freedom of the aircraft uh, talking about uh, three rotational degree of freedom the roll motion of aircraft is defined along the x axis that we talked about x axis of the aircraft and it is like this. So this is the roll motion and the associated variable with this roll motion is the roll rate which uh, we talked about yesterday. <coughs> so this roll a positive roll is no, right to me this wing going down and the left wing going up. The pitching motion is about the y axis which is this axis and is in the xz plane. So aircraft pitching up means no, positive pitching motion and that is going like this. So aircraft is rotating about CG in this fashion if we have positive pitching. And the associated variable is the pitch rate Q. The other motion is the motion rotational motion about the z axis of aircraft and this motion is called yaw. So the wing to the left to me is going forward and this wing to my right is coming towards me. So this is called a positive yaw motion and the associated variable <coughs> to that is R okay so uh, should you really wonder where uh, uh, and why uh, these surfaces are located uh, on the aircraft in this fashion so for example if you look at this wing this wing is lying low on the fuselage you know, this uh, uh, the engine engines are lying in front of the tail and you know, on the wing we could also have location of engine somewhere else we could also have one engine for example so uh, here we see two engines if you look at the vertical tail is no so looking up no vertically up why is not upside down that is also uh, one might wonder about and the horizontal tails so tails are you no know, called tails because they are lying you no know, behind the wing but there are surfaces which are also like tails but they lie in front of the wing 
and those are called forward tails. So if you remember canard is a control surface which can be called a forward tail okay so what I was explaining is uh, you would wonder why why uh, these surfaces on the aircraft are, are located in the way they are located uh, this wing could have been actually straight no not tapered like this here it could be lying on top of the fuselage uh, it could be lying midway and uh, look at the uh, location of the horizontal tail uh, horizontal tail is lying above the wing what are the reasons for all these things you know to, to come to such a design that is what is the subject of study of uh, uh, flight dynamics course so after explaining all that let us uh, look at uh, how wing is actually so let us try to understand some of the basic aerodynamic faces of basic aerodynamics of uh, aircraft let's say so aircraft uh, uh, is actually consisting of lot of aerodynamic surfaces here uh, of which you can see this wing uh, you can see the tail tail is also uh, aerodynamic surface vertical tail and the horizontal tail so let us look at uh, the section of this wing if you take the section of this wing the way it looks like is this this shape is called airfoil airfoil will constitute the wing so any section along the y axis of the aircraft so parallel to the x z plane will give you this section and this is what actually is resulting in giving you lift in flight when air is flowing over this surface. So let us try to understand uh, uh, some of the basic features of this air file and uh, that which, which, which will help us uh, uh, defining some parameters later on. So this air file as it looks like no, let's let's go back uh, one step uh, further and uh, let's talk about an airfoil shape which is so much of this can be covered in the aerodynamics course and we assume here that you have seen what I am going to talk about. So this airfoil which looks symmetric about this line is called a symmetric airfoil. So this part above this line is an is a mirror image of the part which is lying below this line and this line is called the chord line this length joining no, the <coughs> leading edge of the airfoil and the trailing edge is given by this distance which is the cord length 
of this air foil. So this uh, air foil is symmetric and uh, what it means is if uh, the relative wind is coming along the chord line of this air foil then the angle of attack which is measured with respect to this chord line is 0. When you change the uh, orientation of this airfoil, so you can rotate this airfoil, and if this is the direction of velocity, then the angle of attack will change. So, so for example, if this is rotated, the whole airfoil is rotated uh, like this. then the angle of attack is this no? the chord line for this airfoil when it is rotated uh, like this is <coughs> this line which is making an angle with the velocity vector which is giving you the angle of attack which is positive and this gives you a lift over the airfoil which is symmetric in this case okay and the profile or the lift curve for this section which is denoted by this small small cl against angle of attack looks something like this passing through this zero <coughs> origin of the CL versus alpha this axis. So it's not possible that uh, no throughout uh, you keep changing this angle of attack and you keep getting uh, you no know, increase in lift. At some point, what happens is flow over the airfoils starts separating uh, towards the leading edge at some point because of which there is a loss of lift so instead of creating lift starts no the lift actually starts falling down and that is because of the pressure distribution over the over the <coughs> top and the bottom surfaces so there is a, a range of alpha uh, within which you can keep getting uh, uh, increase in lift uh, because of <coughs> the relative wind coming onto the airfoil. No, beyond this alpha, which is called alpha stall, flow separates over this airfoil, and there is a drop in lift. So this region where you see almost linear uh, variation of CL with respect to alpha is called uh, pre stall region and uh, beyond this alpha stall you have post stall region. So in order to uh, derive maximum uh, efficiency from our you know, wing in terms of producing lift what we would want to do in normal flights is to fly in this pre stall region where we can keep changing angle of attack and then uh, keep getting an increase in lift. So this is for this symmetric airfoil. Now let us look at uh, uh, another airfoil which is not symmetric. This is one such airfoil which is not symmetric and uh, the major 
advantage of using such airfoil is to produce uh, lift even at zero angle of attack. So let us see what happens here. So we have this airfoil which is bulging on the top side and flattened on the bottom side and this is the cord length which is joining the leading edge and the trailing edge of the airfoil. We can define another curve which is joining the center of each section of this airfoil this line is called in this case in the symmetric airfoil case the mean camber line is same as the cord line. So here the mean camber line is slightly away from the cord line and so it is if this is the case when the mean camber line is lying above the cord line we say that uh, it is a positive camber so let us look at what happens in this case when uh, we have when we have a uh, uh, let us say velocity vector aligned along this line now because the chord line so it is a similar case if you want to uh, represent here then what you need to do is you need to define this line parallel to the velocity uh, relative wind vector so if uh, you want to draw parallel between the two airfoils then let us say this is the velocity the vector of the relative wind and uh, the airfoil is a positively cambered airfoil now so what is happening in this case So this is one such airfoil. The cord line is joining the leading and the trailing edge. So what you are seeing here by giving a camber to your symmetric airfoil, an increase in angle of attack. So for for the same velocity uh, relative wind speed, but for a different uh, uh, camber uh, of the airfoil, you see there's an angle of a, uh, attack associated with it, and what it results in is giving you a positive lift at. positive lift at zero angle of attack which is this so in a similar uh, fashion we can invert this airfoil and then the uh, airfoil becomes a negatively cambered airfoil and in that case alpha becomes negative no? alpha uh, or 
okay so at uh, 0 uh, angle of attack what you get is a negative left in the case of negatively cambered So clearly uh, if we want to fly our aircraft at uh, alpha which is as low as 0 degree then we would prefer the positively cambered airfoil over the other two cases because it gives me the higher left coefficient. So CL is here So you can see a clearly uh, increase in the maximum CL that you can get in the three cases. So maximum CL is at alpha stall. Okay. So where all uh, uh, these things coming into picture? Uh, let's look at the that. So left is no left over the wing. Total left. by the total lift generated by the aerodynamic surfaces of the airplane is <coughs> is going to be uh, depending upon the airfoil that you choose. Uh, so in case you have chosen this uh, positively cambered airfoil for the wing that is going to give you much higher lift as compared to the other two airfoil. So this is clearly depending upon the <coughs> choice of airfoil. Uh, choice of airfoil is also depending upon the <coughs> the regimes of flight that you want to fly. So let us look at uh, some of the flight regimes based on speeds. If you talk about uh, Mach number which is the ratio of the speed of the airflow over the speed of sound and speed of sound is a function of the temperature. So if you talk about uh, this 0 to 0.5 is now if you want to operate your aircraft only in this flight regime then the choice of airfoil should be different because the flow in that case is incompressible. <coughs> regime of flight between 0 0.5 Mach number and 0 0.8 is uh, compressible so flow over <coughs> airfoil in this case is compressible in this speed regime mark number above 0 0.8 and below 1.2 is 
transonic region where <coughs> there the wing can uh, encounter some of the discontinuities in the airflow because of uh, presence of shock weak or strong depending upon the speed with whether it is close to 0.8 or close to 1.2. So, there are a lot of uh, discontinuity, uh, discontinuity in the flow taking place in this uh, region of speed. This is the supersonic uh, regime of speed. So, Mach number here is greater than 1.2 and less than 5. Clearly, here uh, there are phenomena associated with shock formation uh, taking place. So, in front of the <coughs> the wing or any other surface which is looking like a wing there will be a shock formed and because of the shock formed in front of the wing there will be a discontinuity in the flow. So, depending upon what regime of speed we intend to fly for a longer duration. So, if you look at the typical flight profile you have to start with low speed to take off and then attain the height at which you want to fly your aircraft and then increase your speed to the speed speed regime in which you want to fly your aircraft and the third phase is landing. If you do not want to talk about some low speed maneuvers for example, level turn and so on. So, this is these are the flight regimes that one can design the aircraft to fly in depending upon the requirements and no the choice of airfoil or the wing section is going to dependent upon the speed regimes. All right. <coughs> okay, so uh, so that's why uh, we uh, said in the last, you know, in the first class, that uh, the forces, the aerodynamic forces, or if I want to just write f for <coughs> all aerodynamic forces, it's going to be a function of angle of attack side slip angle and the mark number okay. if you want to include also the compressibility factor uh, with the mark number then you are talking about what is called Reynolds number Reynolds number is defined as the density into the speed into L which is a characteristic length in the case of airfoil this L could be taken as of the mean aerodynamic chord and the viscosity of the fluid. So, you can also write this as U is the viscosity of the medium and your rho is uh, the kinematic so in general these forces are also going to be functions of the rates and in change rate of change of these angles.
and similarly moments are also going to be functions of these variables. So if you want to look at how Reynolds number is having an effect on the CL this lift coefficient of the airfoil uh, with respect to also the thickness of the airfoil uh, we can quickly have a look at that. On the x axis, we have a you want to look at how CL max is varying with Reynolds number and the thickness to chord ratio, which is in percentage. So, thickness of the airfoil is actually the maximum thickness. So wherever uh, you find the maximum distance between the top surface and the bottom surface that, that can be taken as the maximum thickness of the airfoil. If we plot or the thickness, no, thickness or the maximum thickness uh, are the same. So let us try to plot uh, the CL max versus the thickness of the aircraft in terms of the percentage of the card and the effect of the Reynolds number on the CL max. So clearly if you uh, increase the speed of flow over the airfoil then you will get a more lift and this uh, one is for the highest Reynolds number which is nine into ten is to six and it falls down no? CL max falls down with uh, respect to this Reynolds number. So, if we decrease the Reynolds number by two, so decrease by one third, and you see a decrease in the CL max. So, at different uh, values of this T by C ratio in terms of percentage you see a fall in CL max with respect to the speed that you are flying at. So clearly uh, there is a T which is giving us the CL max in different speed of flow over the airfoil. So we have a, a chosen some airfoil depending upon our need and uh, so we, we are getting lift so major contribution coming to the lift is from the from the wing let us say we have decided on a on an airfoil for the wing. Now after deciding that the wing is you know, formed and now what we want to do is we want to change this lift. You know. So there will be a lift uh, corresponding to each angle of attack you know, because of the airfoil that we have chosen. Now what we want to do is we want to uh, increase the lift in flight when you are changing the flight uh, speed regimes or the 
angle of attack no, you want what you want to do is you want to uh, increase the lift or decrease the drag or both. So in case you want to change the uh, left drag profile or both uh, together of course both of them are going to change together because of the flow field changing over the uh, wing due to the change that we are looking at now. So they are leading edge or trailing edge flaps mounted on wings which can further change the the aerodynamic forces in flight. So if uh, the CL versus alpha curve is looking like this, huh, it can be so this for symmetric air file we can go back and assume that the wing is made of positively cambered air foil and let us say we get this kind of CL versus alpha profile. In flight this profile can be changed using the trailing edge and the leading edge flaps which are normally mounted on high performance. aircraft to not only change the maximum lift coefficient which is now this previously it was here but also to change the alpha stall. So use of trailing edge and leading edge flaps are no, now very common on higher performance aircraft. Uh, some of the examples no, of these flaps are So this kind of arrangement is called there is a thin curved surface which is uh, lying in front of the leading edge of the wing it is called leading edge slat. There is another thing wherein the leading edge of the airfoil can be given a droop in flight. So this is called this kind of arrangement is called leading edge droop. This is called Kruger flap. So these uh, devices are used on high performance aircraft nowadays to change the lift profile in flight. 
let us also define what is known as aerodynamic center and air foil. So if you look at uh, the no pressure distribution over the top and the bottom surfaces of airfoil so that is what is giving us the lift no, resulting uh, uh, pressure <coughs> distribution the resulting uh, uh, load due to the pressure is what is giving us the lift and if the if the this uh, load coming because of the pressure on the top surface and the uh, on the bottom surface they are not uh, lying on the same point then they are going to give a rise to a moment right. So if the pressure distribution over the top surface and the, the bottom surface of the airfoil uh, are such that the resultant load is not the loads are not loads from the top and the bottom surfaces are not acting at the same point on the airfoil there are going to to form a couple resulting in pitching moment so let's say the resultant loads are acting at two different points no then this kind of you no know, uh, arrangement of the resultant loads are going to give rise to a pitching moment there is one point on the on the airfoil you know, along the cord of the airfoil where the change in pitching moment with respect to change in angle of attack is 0 you know, and that point on the airfoil is called the aerodynamic center of the airfoil. So, the point along the length of the the point uh, along the length of the airfoil on the chord line where DCM over D alpha is 0 is called the aerodynamic center. So usually for a symmetric airfoil the aerodynamic center is at the quarter chord length of the airfoil
the quarter okay so for symmetric air foil the aerodynamic center is lying at the quarter chord length from the leading edge right so for symmetric air foil uh, the the, the the aerodynamic center is also the also the point where the resultant load on the top and the bottom uh, surfaces acting and that gives me cm quarter chord uh, so if if that is the case we can also say that cm c by 4 for the symmetric air foil is 0 so what it means is in the case of symmetric air foil the loads the dynamic loads are acting at the quarter chord length so there is no uh, uh, moment created because of the loads so cm c of over 4 is Zero and DCM C by four is also zero. Okay. In case of a no cambered airfoil, which is So in case of cambered airfoil of uh, the the loads coming from the the aerodynamics are not uh, acting at the same point and they are giving rise to a moment about uh, the quarter chord which is not zero so cm at the quarter chord is not zero so you get a pitching moment and uh, this is actually equal to pi over 4 into some parameter which is not depending upon so this parameter depends upon the geometry of the airfoil alone and is independent of the angle of attack so this being a constant and independent of no, angle of attack this cm uh, c by 4 for any airfoil which is a cambered airfoil is 0 so what it means is the quarter chord of uh, the airfoil in all three cases can be uh, taken as the aerodynamic center of an airfoil and this will have some implications uh, which we will see later on so dcm over this uh, this uh, sorry uh, cm uh, at the quarter chord length for the camber airfoil is not equal to 0 uh, for positively cambered airfoil this cm c by 4 is uh, actually a 
negative number for we can just 